and back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Yes, I'm aware my head is a slightly different colour to my chest. I'm doing a I'm doing a <clears throat> foundation review, but it's a completely separate film. <sighs> this film, however, you may be admiring these beautiful peacock-esque eye look that I have done. Or you might think, I'd do more blending than that. But the palette that I've used is the Certify Affinity so, if you want to find out exactly how well this applies, blends, etc., my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I would have shown you the outside of this in the intro. Uh, what I won't have shown you is that I'm also going to be doing a separate film using this IT Cosmetics um, CC Illumination, uh, which I think is going to be too dark for me. So if I suddenly appear Oompa Loompa Orange in this film, that is why. However, this film is about this palette, which looks like this. How? bloody beautiful is that and I have the original affinity palette 2 now this is affinity 2 this is affinity 2 T -double -O. T -double -O. T -double -O. so you can see very very different color schemes there is one purple in here but the majority of it is blue and green which is beautiful so, I'm going to start putting some of this on my face. Now, I have done swatches and I will put that on the screen. But before I do that, a little bit of housekeeping. It's going to be a bit repetitive for everybody, but there are still people who do not listen. <sighs> my films are based for all skill levels, whether you've never picked up a brush before or whether you are... I don't know, Jacqueline Hill, like she's watching me. I'm not saying I'm Jacqueline Hill standard, far from it. What I am saying is I remember what it was like as a beginner trying to follow a tutorial. Nightmare. So I always said if I started a channel, it would be so that all skill levels can follow me. Plus, with my chronic pain, there's times that I just cannot blend for very long and I have to stop because it's sending shooting pains everywhere so you know that I have issues some would say more issues than Vogue but there we go however if you have an issue with how slowly I'm talking through each stage there is a speed widget please use it please don't moan remember how it felt when you was starting and how slowly you wanted the tutorial to go. Alright? Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to put the swatches up. Basically, I've gone across. So the top, that's the top row of swatches, and that's the bottom row of swatches. Okay? Right, so, swatches. And they are from left to right, wrist to elbow. Uh, Nawab, Hussein, Aftab, Munir, Navid, Farid, Ijaz, Simab, Akib, and the second row, Nadim, Albert, Shiraz, Shmail, Fraz, Bilal, Shazad, Shuaib, and Shafai. I am really sorry if I have mispronounced any of those. If I have, please tell me the correct pronunciation in my comments box and I will make sure I do it right next time. Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and pre 
primed. And I have used, as usual, my antiperspirant primer, details of which can be found in a little mini film which I've got linked in my description box. It is fantastic if, like me, you suffer from chronic pain and side effects from meds, the combination of those make you have a very sweaty face. Uh, this is pretty much the only way I can keep makeup on, especially in the summer. Right, now, um, I have deep set eyes, so I do have similar issues to people with hooded lids. Now, the way to determine whether you have deep set eyes or hooded lids is as follows. When I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. If your upper static lid covers your mobile lid, either half or full, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, the reason so many people with deep set eyes get confused is that we have very similar problems to people with hooded lids in that we get transfer onto the upper lid, even when we use glitter glues, glitter will not stick on the crease here and will eventually wear off through the day. When we're doing a cut crease we can't just follow the shape of our physical eyeball, etc, etc. The way to determine that you have deep set eyes, if I use this brush, this is the iron blinding so I can close this one. If I use this brush to cover my mobile lid that you can see and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much mobile lid again that tucks back in. And if I cover my static lid and close my eye, you can see I've got a few mils of static lid that also folds in. So that is why I have the same issues as people with hooded lids. Now, you can still follow my tutorial. A lot of my tutorials I am doing in a way that if you have hooded lids, you can just follow it as is. But if I do have some where I'm just blending through my natural crease, what you need to do with your eye open, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch where you need your crease to fall. So for example, imagine you can't see any of my mobile lid. I would then create a hooded lid, or a, a crease here. So effectively you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. It will reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller brushes than I do when blending. Remember, whatever size the head of the brush is, that's how far potentially it can blend the shadow. So use more compact blenders, use tapered blending brushes, um, something like this from, I actually believe it or not, Morphe, this is an M321, this is an M562, these are both very, very good. Um, it is clean, it's just stained, I need to do it with a deep clean at the end of the week. Uh, but both of these are very, very good for smaller eyes or hooded lids, okay? Fabulous. Shall we start putting stuff on my face? Yeah, yes. Right, um, in terms of what I've got on my lid, I've used my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set. Um, I quite fancy doing a shaped one today, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Nadim with this flat brush. And I'm going to very carefully mark out the shape that I want to do. Like so. And then I'll just deepen that line up a little bit, just so it's easier for me to see. Yeah. Now, of course, the real trick is getting it to match on this side. When you're doing this, always remember to have your brows relaxed. Because, I don't know about you, I don't walk around like that all day. Well, unless you've got bad Botox, anyway. 
You have had bad Botox. My heart goes out to you. I must admit, I have actually looked at, you know, would Botox injections stop the sweating? And the general consensus is it can help, but all it will do is move the sweating somewhere else. And also it means that I won't be able to be as expressive with my face as I usually am. Um, I like using a clean washcloth to clean colours off of my brush, but I do have a colour switch that I tap off into just so that the powder stays all in one place and it keeps things a bit tidier. Okay, I'm going to pick up one of these Morphe M321s back into Nadim, which is the colour I've just used to sketch that line out. Not a lot of kick up in the pan with this, which is good, but you do, I don't know if you can see that pigment on that, the black bristles, but you do pick up pigment. Now because I've not set the base, I'm not going to start off by sort of like twirling around. I'm going to stamp the pigment onto the area that I want the colour to be. And by doing very, very light tapping, you can actually blend. It takes a bit longer, and a chronic pain it's a killer, but it does tend to give you a very good effect at the end of it. Now, when I'm doing these, I do go very close to my brow. I know I normally say I try and leave three and, you know, between about sort of like three and five mils below the lowest part of my brow. Um, but that's not always possible with some of these looks that I do. And if you need to go closer to your brow, then so be it. You know, you do you, it's your face. Do what you're happy with. So I've just tapped this all the way across. I must admit, it's not as deep as it appears in the pan. Which actually is quite nice, because that means you can build it up if you want to. Now I'm just going to, now that this is on here, and has effectively set the base, I'm just going to ever so lightly do tiny, tiny, tiny little circular movements at the edge of the colour. I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I'm putting as little pressure on as possible. But I just want to soften that edge a little bit, so that when we add the next colour in, it blends a little bit easier. Okay. If you find that you've blended a bit too much and some of the colour's gone patchy, just tap the colour back on again. Voila. The reason I'm doing this on an unset base is because I really want these colours to punch. Um, if you don't want them quite as bright, you can obviously do it on a set base, in which case um, they'll apply a little bit lighter and when you blend them they'll probably blend kind of to this sort of colour rather than staying bright. But if you're just getting into using colour, then that's possibly the best option for you until you're more confident with, you know, suddenly see. If you've, if you've always done neutrals and then you suddenly go into colour, you are going to terrify yourself the first few times. So starting off on a set base may be better for you. So this is the way that I normally apply pigments because uh, the difference in a pigment and an eyeshadow part of the fact they say pigments are not recommended for use in the immediate eye area the only reason they say that is because they can stain um, and if you have very very sensitive eyes you could get a bit of irritation from it but that's 
picture of all eye shadows. Um, the thing is, that pigments have more colour molecules, more colour pigment, in relation to other ingredients like your talc and your mica and your silica. Because as I understand it, as I've always been told, or what I've read, is that the talc and the mica are added to help colours blend. Those are the ingredients that allow the colour to be moved around without suddenly... If you remember the subculture issue people were having where it was clinging the minute they put it on and then wouldn't blend out, that's what a pigment does because it, it's so intensely concentrated it just goes, thank you, and grabs on. Whereas if it's got a talc or a mica base, it's a little bit easier to spread out. It's like the difference between trying to spread butter straight from the fridge and trying to spread margarine straight from the fridge. Um, just to give you a bit of a you know, comparison there. Um, sorry, drink. And it's silicon straw for those wondering. I'm going to go into, um, I think, Fraz. This has slightly more kick up in the pan. That's right. I'm just going to tap off onto the pan. Kick up doesn't worry me because you can always go back in and pick it up again on the next round. Now you can see that looks very, very similar in tone. But I'm hoping it's going to come out a little bit lighter. Let me just test that on the back of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> Before I chucked it on my face. And obviously there's nothing on my hand. There's no primer or anything. It is just my skin. So, let's pick up that kick up. And what I'm going to do initially, I'm going to overlap the first colour that I put on there with this colour as you can see hello camera can we stay in focus please can you do your job thank you so much I'm just going to tap this along and then very very lightly start to blend now I do struggle on this outer corner because of deep creasing looking far too similar to the first colour but never mind. We shall continue folks. This happens sometimes. But it's okay. I should just put a darker colour in I think. I should go back in with a darker shade. But you can see those two have blended together beautifully. Really beautifully actually. So let's do the same on this side. Again, starting off with overlapping. I think if you were doing this on a set base, you would see more of a difference in the two tones. But when I've chosen to do it like this, um, they're a little bit, a little bit too similar. But that's not an issue still going to be pretty and unlike a lot of people if I do a muck up like that I leave it in camera let's just bring that down now I'm going to go into one of the deeper deeper shades uh, let's get my little flat top brush again I'm going to go into Shazad. Now, anything that you put on that's deeper recedes the colour. Anything deep goes backwards. Anything light comes forwards. So I'm just adding a bit of a deeper tone to the edge of what we'd originally done.
Then I'm going to go in with this 321 brush and just deepen it up a tad. now sort of sweep this across because I've effectively set the base with the previous colours which means I can kind of just blend this along the line and just sort of fade it upwards There, I think we can see the difference between those two, can't we? Hmm. You see, I leave cock-ups in. Because everybody makes them. And the important thing is knowing how to fix it. Sometimes, the only way to fix it is to take it all off and start again. Other times, you can... Make some adjustments, which is effectively what we're doing here. Now I do struggle with this deep creasing here. Don't pull your lid out like this unless you absolutely have to. But I really, really struggle with those deep creases there. Right, let's clean this brush off much of that green off as we can. It does stain a little bit so bear that in mind if you're using white brushes. Mm. And again we're just gonna tap and blend to Deepen things up a little bit, like so. She's looking very bird-like at the moment. What do you think of it? My husband had a an owl toy as a child, which he insisted on calling newts. So, yeah, we always refer to owls as newts now. It's very sort of if you know what butchkawa means. Do make very odd sounds. You, uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm trying to learn a new language at the moment, which. With fibro fog is not good because one day I can remember what the difference is between boy and girl and man and woman, and other times I'm like, oh, what's that word again? I have no idea. So, yay. Not as easy as it was when I was learning French at school, which I haven't used really since I left school, apart from to order a toasted ham and cheese sandwich, milky coffee, a carafe of wine an ashtray because I smoked back then and to ask where are the toilets really if you can ask for food and drink and where the toilets are you're pretty much covered what else do you need to know <coughs> yes I'm being very very facetious uh, I'm just gonna grab a q-tip bit of micella water. And I'm 
just going to grab my small mirror here and just clean the lid up a little. I'm going to be going in with lighter colours and this time if I, very often when you've used deeper colours like this, when you then go in with your concealer it can blend and you get like a hint of, in this case, green uh, and that's not what I want um, because I'm going to be going in with, as I said, quite a light shade. So, time to paint my eyes. I'm going to go in with my tart shape tape. Now, this time, because I've already sketched it out to be above my foldy bit, I don't need to show you the tip of putting it on and blinking and seeing where it comes to. What I'm going to do though, I use these, um, they're actually acrylic nail brushes, well nail brushes designed to be used with acrylic, but look how thin they go, perfect for what we're about to do. So, I'm just going to grab some of the concealer off of the doe foot, put it back in and close it because I know what a class I am. I'm going to get my little mirror so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to basically fill in the area of the mobile lid and the part of the static lid where we have no colour. Now, be as slow as you need to when doing this. Accuracy is way more important than speed. But the beauty of these brushes is you can get a very very crisp line. That's why I love using these because even though my eyelid moves a lot more than a 20 year old would, because I am quite literally a week away from being 45, and having lost 10 stone in the last few years, I'm just cleaning um, the concealer off of the brush because what I'm now going to do you can see both sides are clean I'm going to very gently press this all over the concealer and what this will do if we've got any excess or clumpy concealer it will pick it up and that's the kind of thing that would then sort of mix in with the next shadow that we're using and make it look ultra messy see again I'm just going to clean that brush off because it's a cream I always do and I always do one eye at a time as well because I, I want it to remain nice and sticky. Now this was the size number 12 which I believe relates to how wide the bristles are. I'm then going to go in with number 10 which is clean but is stained from a previous one that I have used. And I'm going to go in to uh, 
think Chaffe to start with. And I'm just going to press this onto the sticky concealer. So you do not need to wet the shadow because it's going onto a sticky base. And now you can see why I cleaned the lid off and wanted it to be as un sort of unaffected by the green as possible. I don't know how well this is showing up on screen, but this has actually got like a a very, very pale blue green reflect to it, which I think is absolutely beautiful. And again, because these brushes are so thin, you have super accuracy when it comes to applying it to your eye. So I'm taking it to sort of the bottom of the, the dip and kind of angling it down the outer edge of my eye because I want to come in with a slightly darker or do I? Do I want to keep yeah I think I do want to go in with a darker one so I'm just going to clean the brush off and I'm going to go into Shahab this one feels much creamier when you're picking it up on the brush Look at the reflect on that, look. And I'm going to pop this well on the outer edge. the chauffe a little bit yes I like that and I'm just going to get a bit of chauffe back on the brush so I'm cleaning it off Grab a bit of chauffe back on the brush and just lightly drag that some shahab on the back so I've got the white one on the front shahab on the back and then kind of gently push the two colours into each other to get a beautiful blend and yes I've got fallout but I've not done my base yet so that's really not an issue but I really, oh that just looks so pretty. Don't you think that looks pretty? Um, right, I'm getting email after email after email here. Sorry, it's really frustrating for you hearing the buzzing. Because it's, uh, it's kind of annoying to me. Tidying up these inner corners a little bit. And then just going to very carefully shape the edge and take off any excess just to give us that nice continuation of the beautiful curve. How pretty is that? I do like the, um, the Certify formula. I think 
Certify and Blush Tribe because they're sisters, so I'm guessing they use the same lab. Um, actually, have some of the best eyeshadow formulas that I've ever used. Um, if I had to choose the best eyeshadow palette in my collection, I know people are expecting me to say Jeffree Star. Sorry, I'm really concentrating, can you tell? But in actuality, my absolute favourite eyeshadow palette that I have is the Hasina 2 from Blush Tribe. I think that is a simply stunning palette. It has a unique shade to my collection in a shade called Re. And it just performs magnificently. So again, I'm just going over with a clean brush. to make sure we've got everything even. Clean the brush off again. And then just pressing the clean brush on the top to pick up Any excess product. If you're wondering which shade of concealer I'm using, it's 8B, which is porcelain beige, which I believe is the lightest one they do. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when I ordered it, it was definitely the lightest one that was on the list. So, mm. so having cleaned the cream off of the brush, I'm just going to put its little plastic cover back on. I always keep the plastic covers because where I've got all of them in a pot, it stops them from um, from the bristles getting kind of splayed. So, time to go in with some chaffe. The reason I'm stretching this lid out is because where I've got such deep creases, I know from experience if I don't do this with shimmers, they sit across the top of the crease rather than covering the whole area and then as I blink and move my eye during the day I get a cascade of um, pigment coming down and usually end up with multi-coloured shimmery freckles which if that's the look you're going for fantastic uh, if it's not the look you're going for not so good Obviously I can show you slightly differently with this eye because being blind in it I can actually close the eye. But effectively the procedure is exactly the same. You're just pushing the pigment onto the sticky concealer base. And now I'm going into the Shahab, which I didn't realise until I put it on my face as a duochrome. I'm being 
being super, super careful, as you can tell, because I shut up. I don't do that very often, as my husband can attest. That's the problem with being half Welsh, half Yorkshire. Both Wales and Yorkshire, like a good chat. Where I've patted it on, I'm now just smoothing it so that we get the whole duochrome effect because I really want that to show up. Where did I go to? About there, wasn't it? On the other eye. I always sit back and look because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. So it's always best to sit back and look because very often I have to do different shapes on both eyes in order to make them look the same. Sounds bizarre, I know. So I've got Shafay this side and Shahib that side. So I'm going to drag a little bit of the Shafay onto the Shahib and then some of the Shahib onto the Shafay and just keep doing that until I'm happy with the blend. Hmm. That looks super pretty. Yes, I like that a lot. Right, I am now going to go off camera and I'm basically going to go and do my foundation. And this time I need to remember to record it because I'm doing a foundation review. So I will be back, uh, well for you it's going to be instantly to finish this eye look off. So, see you right now. Okay. I am back. Slightly oompa loompa -ish, but let's ignore that for the moment. Right, I'm going to go in to... I think Albert, which is um, a kind of khaki green. Because I want to kind of pick up on the duochrome of the... That one, and I also want to sort of add a bit of contrast to the brightness above. And I'm just going to use as a, the flat top brush that I used earlier. I'm just smudging this along up under my lower lashes. Yes, I have purple brows. I'm still trying to decide if I like it or not. Out of interest, when I used that, that's actually the Revolution Brow Pomade, when I used it in my waterline yesterday, it actually stayed there for a whole seven hours. It faded, but it was still there, which is pretty much unheard of for anything I've put in my waterline, ever. So. And I'm now going to grab uh, this brush, which is it's actually the brush that came with my Tarte uh, Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped, but chunky. They like me. <laughs> and I'm going to go into Schmale. Beautiful bright green. Just tap off. I'm going to just buff that very lightly. It's almost a spring green under my lower lash line there, just to soften that out a bit. And yes, you may not like this look, you may think it's too architectural or needs better blending, but some days I want a more stark harsher edged look to things because I'm just in that sort of mood today I'm in a lot of pain everything feels sharp and hurts so 
My makeup can be sharp today, eh? Ooh. I was going to put wings on sharp enough to cut a bitch, but I'm getting too many fibro trimmers, so that's not a good plan because they would end up like a bloody roller coaster. <laughs> not good, look. I do like this. I don't normally take it out that far, but I quite like the. It's almost Toya from the 80s. I like. I like it a lot. Yes. Right. I'm going to go in with. If I can find it. There we go. This is the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in. Electric Daisy. poked myself in the ruddy eye again. So good at doing that. And this is the eye that I see with. Lord help me on the other side. This is not as bright as I was expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be much more like the colour of the outer barrel so I'm a little disappointed I mean when you swipe it on your finger it does look that bright but then when you get it on your waterline or at least I can't get it to go that bright anyway not without hurting myself I do struggle with um, putting things in my waterline. I've got very runny eyes anyway, and pretty much from March to October, I suffer with hay fever as well. And fibro, um, one of the side effects of that is, is runny eyes. So, yeah, I got it coming at me from all directions basically. Uh, I'm going to go in with the Nikki Ofra Tutorials Highlighter in Space Baby. This is a really cheap brush I got off eBay years ago. I believe it was a lip brush. But it's the perfect shape for what I'm about to do. I know this has got a blue tinge to it, but so has that green that we put there. It's got a slight blue tinge. So I'm just popping this up under the tail end of my brow just to pull it all together. It also picks up on the duochrome. And I'm going to do in a corner. So I'm actually going to pick up some of that green and pull it round with the highlighter. And then pull that underneath join in with the colours that I've got under my eye because I just find that with my particular eye shape that is the most flattering way to highlight my inner corner. Like so. I am looking like a peacock and I'm loving it. Right, I'm going to pause you while I do mascara, stick highlight everywhere else, choose a lippy and do something with my hair, and I'll be back. Please go nowhere. I mean, come on, how could you run away from brows like this, huh? I feel like Groucho Marx. <laughs> hey, hair has just done one on me today. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, mascara today. I actually use my Benefit Bad Girl Bang instead of my dupe because I don't have to go anywhere today. So if I do get Alice Cooper trailing mascara, it's not a problem. Um, 
Lippy is the Revolution Prime, which is the dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Because I thought, as I've gone so peacock with the eyes, I would do something a tad more neutral for the lips. So, what do I think of this palette? Um, the shades that I used, I really liked. Um, it was a shame that these two came out looking so similar on my eyes, but that's probably because of the way I applied them. If I'd used it on a set base and blended them out more, I probably would have seen more of a difference in tone. So that's, that's user error. However, it did mean I got to use this one down here as well to deepen it up, which looks absolutely stunning. Um, I love the fact that these two are both duochrome. I didn't realise until I put it on my eyes, even though I'd swatched them. Uh, makes me wonder now whether this one is a duochrome as well. So I need to do a, I need to do a blue look with this soon, I think. Um, obviously, I've not used all of the shadows, far from it. If I'd used all of them, I would need to be a spider with eight sets of eyes to have used all of these shadows. But what I can say is I love all the shades in Affinity 1. So far I have loved all the shades I have used in Affinity 2. Um, Affinity 1 was actually all matte, so this is the first time. This one has actually got the duochromes in it. Um, the mattes in this perform exactly as well as the mattes in the first one do. So if you've got the first one and you like the formula, the colours that I have used so far out of this, the mattes at least perform in exactly the same way. Um, the duochromes have gone on really nicely, blended together superbly well. A little bit of fallout when I was applying them, but I kind of expected that because the way I applied them. So the fallout dusted away really easily. So if I had done my base first, it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, if you're looking at this and thinking, do I want it? Do I not want it? Um, I would absolutely say yes. If you're looking at Jeffrey's Blue Blood or Tarte Icy Betch and thinking, do I want them? Do I not want them? If I had to choose between the three, Geki, sit down, you might pass out at this point. If I had to choose between Blue Blood, Icy Betch and this palette, from what I've seen so far I would choose this palette. It performs way better than Icy Betch did. If you've seen that film, you know what I'm talking about. I was on the struggle bus with that one, I tell you. Um, and it has more greens than the Blue Blood because by virtue of its name, it's mainly blues. So if I had to choose one palette out of those three, I would actually choose this one. And people who know how much I love Jeffree Star's formula are probably hyperventilating with shock right now. I apologise for giving you an apoplexy. So, long story short, do I think you need this? Nobody needs makeup. Do I think you would like this? Yes. Do I think you would love this? If you like blues and greens, yes. Uh, if you don't like blues and greens, then this is not your palette, because it is pretty much a blue and green palette. Um, I really like this. Uh, I've got... This is now the third certified palette that I've bought and so far I have not been disappointed with any of them. So I've got the Destiny, I've got Affinity 1 and Affinity 2 and yeah, I like every single one of them and can recommend every single one of them. Obviously I'm going to continue to use this, I need to do a blue eye look with it. I need to try more of the shadows, I need to try it on a set base and see how they perform. So um, probably a lot of that, I might do the blue look on camera, um, but a lot of the testing that I do of palettes I do off camera. 
um, when I just sit there and just play with shadows and see how they perform on different bases. So I will obviously keep you updated on my feelings on uh, this particular palette as the weeks and months go by. But this is one of my low buys for the month. It came under my exceptions, which was the um, pre-orders, because I was worried that if I didn't pre-order it, I wouldn't get it. I was worried it was to sell out, basically, and I wanted this palette. Big time, I wanted this palette. So, I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative and maybe even a little bit fun. Please double check that you are still subscribed and if you have rung the notification bell, please check that is still rung and that you, it still shows that you've chosen all notifications. YouTube are... I mean, I've, I've had it myself, I've been deleted from channels that I follow, I've had the notification bell unrung or I've had it, it's still rung but it goes to some, not all notifications and some notifications basically means no notifications. YouTube, really not trying to help the smaller creators here. Um, but, all the while you enjoy what I'm putting out and I'm enjoying doing it. I will continue to produce more of these tutorials for all skill levels. So, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.